So welcome to Global Influencers. This is a particularly fascinating episode because we have met with doctors from literally all over the globe trying to get the global perspective on what is going on in regenerative medicine. So we traveled to India, we traveled to Mexico, we have doctors from Asia, all over Europe, trying to get a global read on what is going on with stem cells and regenerative medicine in other countries. Yeah, and it really is different everywhere that you go because the regulatory climate is so different in different countries. So the United States could do certain things, but maybe they have different rules in Japan or different rules in the Ukraine. So we get to talk to some of those people and see what's allowed in their countries and what kind of breakthroughs they're making. Enjoy Global Influencers. We've been using a lot of chemicals, you know, uh, pharmaceutical agents. Now we are come to conclusion that we can do it without that. The stem cell is the master cell which makes your entire organ. That is the first line of the treatment for the degenerative medicine. That is the first line of the treatment for the degenerative medicine. The stem cell is the master cell of the body. The stem cell makes the entire body. But what is the body? Body is the combination of the organs. Mm -hmm. It means this stem cell is making entire every single organs. Mm -hmm. But the question comes here, is it possible to take out the stem cell in the lab from the body? So I took the mouse embryonic stem cell and then I put a specific feeder cells mm -hmm. which can feed this mouse cells, okay? So I successfully cultured that. Then I brought the human embryonic stem cell from the National Institute of Health cell line, maintains that government of America. So I cultured those. Then, then I started so thinking, is it possible to differentiate these stem cells in, into different kind of cells. Just take blood stem cell. So all the leukemia, lymphomas, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, all these things, what we do, we take the bone marrow. What are the bone marrow? Bone marrow is the hematopoietic stem cell or the blood stem cell. Mm -hmm. So if we generate the blood stem cell in the lab, all these disease can be treated very easily without any donor. We don't need donor then. So this is sort of turning medicine on its ear. Yes. Because these diseases were managed but not cured. Exactly. But, but this is the cure for this kind of disease. And I give you a very good example actually. It, it happened in Germany. A person is suffering what suppose HIV AIDS. It is infection to the T cell that is a kind of stem cell derived or blood, blood cell. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what they did, they irradiated entire person, killed all the immune system because the HIV AIDS is the immune related problem. So they killed entire immune system and then they injected the hematopoietic stem cell, that is the blood stem cell. These blood stem cells went inside the body and repopulated and constructed entire new blood. So that person was out of HIV. It cured it? Yes, he's out of HIV. So you see, these are the significant use of this thing. These are the real cure. You, you take uh, multiple sclerosis or type 1 diabetes, or ALS. All these things are autoimmune disease related to the blood problem. If you can change with the correct blood or correct stem cells, then there is no problem. The person can, can come out from this disease. I mean, it's really changing the course of medicine. I mean, you realize, yeah. you know, you're in the, the lab, you're making these discoveries. I mean, how does it feel to realize that you know, you, you're sort of playing with something that could change the face of medicine and health for everybody. I feel a little humble. Your own cells are more near to you than anybody else. So this is the most natural way, basically, to treat your disease, if you think that way. And I think that way, because it is your own cell. You are taking your own cell to treat your own problem. So this is the most natural way to treat yourself. And this is a treatment kind of thing. Of course, after taking the cells, you have to manage your lifestyle because life is, management of lifestyle is very important. So if the stem cell is bringing you back, and this is a very common question, okay, I'm going to take a stem cell. Am I going to get this disease again or not? Mm -hmm. Yes, if you will not manage properly your lifestyle. You're in the lab, you realize that the stem cells are repairing brain damage. How do you get from that to forming Geostar and doing the kind of work that you guys are doing now? I realize that this is high time 
to to really help those people who who are having all those problems and not having any option for the treatment and almost dying every single day so i was again i will say i was fortunate enough that i have very good friends surrounding me our institution's uh, ceo uh, name is uh, mr devan patel he he is very old friend of mine and we work together with several kind of social work and all these things and i was talking with him one day and i was telling uh, that i really feel very sad when i see every single day that uh, people are suffering and uh, if we can do something and certainly nobody can do everything alone so i talked with him and he told yes how much i told i don't know how much but it's a lot of money he told okay let's do it and he has that kind of passion why he has that kind of passion because i think personally because he was so much involved in the social work in 2008 we formed this global institute of stem cell therapy and research at san diego together uh, with the co-founders he has very good connection with the prime minister of india and all this he told me that why not we go to and talk to indian prime minister directly and say that yes this is the science yes it is not 100% mature but it is backed by real science and the prime minister of india that time was the chief minister or governor of the state and he told i have people suffering with the sickle cell anemia right okay and is it possible for you guys to treat these people using the stem cell we told yes then he told okay if you are confident i give you all the facility whatever you want in short yes he gave all the funding and we thought okay we'll do all these things there so what kind of stem cell therapies are you doing in the united states we we are basically doing our research here at mm -hmm. U usa and uh, we may do autologous that is stem cell transplant uh, for not for sickle cell or thalassemia or leukemia but uh, for the uh, knee problem or joint problem so these kind of things can be done here at usa Can you tell me about the different places that you're doing the research what kind of research you are doing We have our hospital and research centers in India as I told we have our private hospital and research center mm -hmm. we are making uh, uh, world biggest stem cell transplant center with the prime minister of India Why is it so much easier to make these scientific breakthroughs in other countries than in this one It's little uh, political and uh, business and scientific question you see the logical thing if there is a disease first we have to see whether we have any treatment for this disease or not we should say oh these are the data available if you think it is okay and if doctor thinks it is okay should we try or not answer comes yes we must try because the matter of somebody's life and death when the cell is coming from person's own body how it may be harmful like we do blood transfusion every day blood is the combination of all kind of cells and we allow liters of the blood to be transfused why because we say okay if you want to do blood storage these are the guideline mm -hmm. and if you are following these gu guidelines we allow you to use this blood to transfuse to somebody else to save the life right. same with the stem cell a stem cell is a cell a cell not the combination of the cells as blood cells as but certainly we need help from the people and the scientists and the government like japan japan you know japan already uh, uh, allowed that long back korea allowed that why we are not doing it if somebody is dying there is a scientific data to help this person even little bit we must do that can we talk about you know the united states i think we're very much a um a sick model we're not a curing model. We tend to manage symptoms. We don't necessarily look for a cure. It seems to me like this gives us the ability to find the cure. How many kind of diseases a human may get in entire lifetime? There are only three kind of problems a human may get. Disease wise. First disease comes from the infection, mm -hmm. outside infection. What are those infection? Bacteria, virus or microorganism? So for bacteria we have wonderful antibiotics you take 10 days course 7 days course and bacteria is gone you are healthy as you was before second is microorganism amoeba or plasmodium all these things you have very good antimicrobials and 95% time again you are cured 
out of this problem. Third infection comes from the virus. We do not have any cure like HIV, Ebola, tons of viral disease, okay? We do not have any cure. So I, I told three categories of disease. First category is which is only bacteria and microorganism we have. So just the 20 percent of diseases you can treat using this kind of antibiotics or antimicrobial. Then second kind of disease comes because of any trauma like somebody is going had an accident or bypass surgery. So those diseases which may be cured using the surgery. But how many percentage of disease you may cure using the surgery? Maybe 10 percent. Mm -hmm. And But the, those are the cures, okay? So 10 percent and 20 percent is the 30 percent. What are those rest 70 percent disease? These are the malfunction of the body. There is no foreign infection. There is no trauma or accident. It's a malfunction of the body. What are these malfunctions? We are aging, okay? <laughs> Eyesight is going down, wrinkles are coming, hair is falling down, hair is going white and gray on the, <laughs> the heart is not working, lung is not working, muscle is going down, uh, hyper cholesterol, hyper blood pressure, diabetes, all these are malfunction of the body. The stem cell is the master cell which makes your entire organ. That is the first line of the treatment for the regenerative medicine. But with this, your lifestyle, your exercise, your food habit, all this combined is the regen regenerative medicine. So these are the real treatment. If you do this, you, will, you may come out from the disease. We have to think one thing very carefully here, that body, we think it is a compartment, okay? A particular organ, a particular cell, and a signaling pathway is a compartment. It is not true. Body itself is whole very synchronized way it functions. So if one part is having problem, whether we know or we don't know, all other problems are having problems. So, you know, one of the things that I saw that went viral was you created heart tissue. But the significance of this is, this experiment tells us that, yes, somebody, suppose somebody heart uh, muscle is damaged, okay? There is no treatment for today, muscle damage of the heart. Or, so we can use these cells and really repair the uh, damaged portion of the heart muscle or, or several kind of neurological diseases, which we, we treated a lot of people in our Indian uh, uh, setup. At the, till today, I think we, we might have treated at least more than 15,000 patients wow. in different kind of diseases neurological, muscular dystrophy, Alzheimer, Parkinson's. Now, you've worked with the Christopher Reeve Foundation. So I showed first time that, yes, brain cells can be repaired. And at the same time, uh, the superman, Christopher Reeve, had the spinal cord injury. And he was looking that if anybody may develop some kind of a spinal cord repair program using the stem cell. And he came to know that, yes, a stem cell may help in regeneration of damaged neurons but nobody has done it before. So we talked, then I was invited to the UCI to work with this group to develop this program for this spinal cord injury. And yes, we started from the mouse model because uh, uh, we, have, we cannot directly go to the humans, okay? So we, we created a mouse model of the spinal cord injury and then we make the stem cell and then we showed that, yes, the spinal cord injury may be repaired and that was the first clinical trial approved by US FDA to use the embryonic stem cell to treat the spinal cord injury. In 2007, you had worked on spinal cord damage, used mouse models, incredible findings. 11 years later, not a whole lot has been done with this, these findings. You and I know why, but can you explain why that hasn't happened? Who gets generally spinal cord injury? very young person, right. sometime biking, sometime playing a sport, and there is no treatment at all for the spinal cord injury. Only answer is I am telling you these stem cells, because there is no treatment, so at least try stem cell. And have they regained movement? Yeah, feeling? regained their movement and bowel and bladder function, and in few cases they start walking, 
you know. But we cannot do here in USA because of uh, our regulations and all these things. You were consulted with Nancy Reagan after Ronald Reagan died. Yeah. She had a lot of questions about how his Alzheimer's might have been treated. Because she, she was searching, you know, she was shattered. And she, she was thinking, and that time stem cell was very beginning. Yeah. So he was thinking, is it possible to really treat this Alzheimer's or neural degenerative diseases using stem cell science? And that was very normal and uh, uh, genuine question. At that time, I, I first time showed that, yes, stem cell may be changed into the neural cells. And that's what the uh, beginning of the debate in San Diego. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, picked that, and then he wanted to become the governor of the California. And he told, yes, he is going to support the stem cell science if he gets, gets selected for the office. And uh, thanks for the people of the California, they are so progressive thinker that they selected and voted for the Prop 71. And that's the real start of the stem cell. Then entire California and the scientists of the California after 2005 jumped in the field of stem cell science. Millions of the dollar has been spent on the field of stem cell science. Last at least 15 years, this field is continuously progressing. All publication will say in the conclusion that yes, this is the only way to go. So why are we stalled? <laughs> that's, that's really a big question. So where do you see stem cells in five years? Where do you see the future of stem cells? I remember uh, Jonas Salk. And if you know the story of Jonas Salk, that when he was making the polio vaccine, nobody was ready to test that vaccine because everybody was thinking he may get polio or she may get polio. So he was very frustrated. Then he got frustrated. He tested that vaccine on him, his wife, his kids, and a few of his friends, and then created the data for polio. So he tells you, if you have to do something, and if you are thinking that it is correct, you have to dare that. I know one thing. If the truth is there, if the intentions are clean, nobody can stop you in the world. Yeah, and, and so, most important thing, if you are working for the society, not for your own benefit. That is the most important thing I want to convey. Our philosophy is always think about the society first. What can you do for the society? Whatever the way you can do, nobody can stop this science. How you can say that I'm not a stem cell? Who can say I'm not a stem cell? Tell me, nobody. Any medical doctor coming out of any medical school must learn stem cell, otherwise they'll be left behind. Must learn stem cell, otherwise they'll be left behind. See, our vision is to make this most expensive, most elite, and most advanced science available to the masses. That is the GeoStar vision. And how do you make it available to masses, which is very expensive, as we all know, so when you work with the world governments, that, that will allow you to access to the masses, mm -hmm. that will allow you the finances, that will allow you the regulatory accommodations. So that's what we are doing. We are working with the world governments and help them develop their stem cell research program, transplant program, or their policies for uh, many reasons that they don't. So for India, we are developing stem cell transplant program for, we can say, almost 155 million people in four different states. I, I don't think I heard you correctly. 155 million people. Million? Yes. How are you going to do that? I mean, that's staggering. It, it, it's, that's, that's where the government comes in place mm -hmm. because they have their own programs, health programs in place. So you're plugging into those programs and that will allow you to scale it faster and access to the masses faster. So, and that's the strategy we have chosen. So that way you have government behind you, government finances behind you, government regulatory machinery behind you, yeah. so that you can do it faster. Now, are there specific diseases that, or conditions that you're looking to treat with this, or is it going to be a wide variety of things? There are a wide variety of things, but in India, particularly for this project, we're working with the government on sickle cell anemia and thalassemia, and then slowly expand into the many other degenerative diseases. Also, I imagine you'll be gathering a lot of data when you're treating these people. Yes, that's the whole point, is to create the largest 
clinical data available on planet Earth, and that's our goal. And to do that, we have just launched our most ambitious project in the United States. The simple process in America is to go through the FDA processes where you apply for the, your particular uh, indication that you wanted to work on and then go for that uh, whole process and go for it. So what kinds of conditions are you looking at treatment states? Right now we wanted to try with one or two indications, mm -hmm. if possible diabetes mm -hmm. and one another uh, autoimmune condition uh, and then expand it based on what results we get. Now the challenge in the United States, there are tons of people with diabetes in the States. A lot of them are just really unhealthy. They haven't taken care of themselves, they eat the wrong things, they don't exercise. How are you going to be able to manage that side of their treatment? We have to make this available. Mm -hmm. Once we do that, and once we treat them, then the second part comes is the education part, which is where we have to help them develop or manage their lifestyle properly. Eventually, once they are serious enough, you will be able to come to the good conclusion where you can say, yes, with this stem cell, with certain lifestyle, you can get certain results. In America, diabetes is a multi-billion dollar industry. Yes. So you're also going to come up against a lot of people who realize that this might affect their livelihood. We've been coming across this since the last 18 years, and still not a single pharmaceutical company has been closed. So we are going to create a tremendous clinical data that has never been created ever before by any pharmaceutical company or any country. And that data will basically unfold many possibilities and allow many, many other diseases to be treated faster, easier, and cheaper. Presently in the, the United States, any stem cell treatment is not covered by insurance. So it's, it's really open to the people who have the money to have the treatment in the United States, lay out the money, or have the money to be able to go overseas and have it done. Right, right. It's really for the rich, and, and there's a there's sort of a, a tragedy there that the people who have the money can be healthy and the people who don't, well, too bad. And that's where the Geostar comes in. That's where the Geostar vision comes in, that this is the most, in the beginning, I said, most advanced, most elite, and most expensive science of mankind. And our vision is to make it available to the masses. And how you can do that? Working with the governments and creating these kind of programs where everybody's uh, allowed to uh, access these kind of treatment, and that's what we are doing. What made you want to have this personal mission in life? From the beginning, from my early childhood, I always somehow was blessed or directed to do service for whatever reason. And when Dr. Srivastava, Anand Srivastava's science was exposed to me, or I was exposed to it, I saw another way of touching other humans' life or improving other humans' life. Geostar is not a business. It's a divinely ordained project. You've put a lot of your own money into this. Money is not important. It is, I put everything in it. I put everything in it because I believe in this science. I believe in Dr. Anand Srivastava. I can tell you, Geostar may not be the largest corporation in the world, but it will be the most impactful institute ever built on planet Earth because the way it is going to change the lives of many human around the globe that no other organization ever been able to do it because the intentions are very clear to make it available to the masses. So what do we have to do in the United States to be able to treat as many people as you're treating in India? Because you know we, we are a sick country. We're overweight, we've got diabetes, we've got high blood pressure, we've got heart conditions. I mean, we're just sedentary and ill. We have to pay attention to our lifestyle. Better exercise, yoga, meditation. If we can do all that, half of the population will, need, will not need any medicine. And the rest will do it with stem cell. So what makes your stem cell therapy different than the clinician who's doing, let's say, adipose tissue? So being hardcore researcher, we have ability to create protocols such that our treatment will give you maximum uh, outcome or maximum results. Then average clinicians who are practicing adipose tissue, nothing wrong with it, they're doing a great job, and stem cells job is to regenerate, so it's going to do something. Part of our mission is to education of the clinicians. Once we have that launched, 
we will bring those clinicians to the higher level of uh, practicing of the higher level of science. Do you think this is going to impact the way Americans or anybody around the world is being treated medically? It is 180 degree turn in a medical practice. We've been using a lot of chemicals, you know, uh, right. pharmaceutical agents. Now we are come to agreement or a conclusion that we can do it without that, with our own cells. God put those cells in our body to regenerate <laughs> and repair. And we figured it out. We're in a business of research, something that was already there. We just found it. Five years from now, majority of illnesses will be treated by stem cell. And any medical doctor coming out of any medical school must learn stem cell. Otherwise, they'll be left behind, period. With the sheer number of people that you have treated around the globe, there have to be, just statistically, there have to be some people who haven't been happy or people who feel they didn't get the results that they wanted. Can you talk about that? Everybody thinks that stem cell is a, a magic pill, that mm -hmm. you take it and you're cured. No, it's not that. You know, it's a process. It all depends on the degree of disease, type of disease, stage of disease that you're going through and, and what kind of people treating you. <laughs> If, if you're being treated by uh, clinicians who just came to know about stem cell, you may not have better results. In our case also, Dr. Anand Srivastava has a maximum contribution in the field of stem cell neurology. He still says that neurological conditions are the hardest to treat. Mm -hmm. So it is not a magic pill, but it is very close to that magic pill. In addition to all the stem cell work that you guys are doing, you also have developed blood. Yes, blood also out of stem cell. Mm -hmm. You know, so Dr. Anand developed the universal grade red blood cells. Here's the problem with the blood business or blood uh, industry is that we collect about 100 million unit blood around the globe every year from you and I do donation, blood donation at Red Cross. After doing that, every year we have another 100 million unit shortage approximately. So we have basically 50% of our supply. And there are three problems with the blood. If somebody needs a blood, first you have to make sure you match type A, type B. Second, you have to make sure there are no contaminations, you know, HIV and many other, you know, uh, things that come through. And third, you have to make sure do you have enough. As I said, we don't have enough. We have only 50% of the supply. We solve all three problems. Dr. Srivastava created a universal grade red blood cell, so it does not require to match. So it can go to anybody without match. It is being created in a control environment in a bioreactor, so no contaminants cleanest blood, and unlimited resource. It's a $100 billion a year market. Yet another game changer. I mean, that's Yes, imagine, the, you know the kids die because of leukemia because they didn't find HLA matching? It's not needed anymore. It's not required anymore. No kids have to die anymore. Thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, they need a blood transfusion all the time, you know? Not anymore. And this is now in the market? No. this is in a process of getting into the market. It will take another three to five years to go, go through the whole process of FDA approval and all that stuff. Now, we are personally working with um, a number of former combat veterans trying to get them stem cell treatments to treat traumatic brain injuries. And uh, I understand you guys are working with veterans as we, well. We are working on exactly the same thing with this 500,000 Americans to be treated. One of the most important part in that we wanted to bring in is uh, traumatic brain injuries so we can help the combat soldiers and uh, sportsmen all together. And it's not just sportsmen or our soldiers, but many, you know, kids falling off the bicycle or, you know, domestic violence. You know, there are many, many things, you know. So right. it encompasses many, many people. Where are they going to be treated? What is the timeline for that? Basically, our timeline depends on the FDA uh, processes that we go through. Let's say maximum 36 months. I can't thank you enough for spending this time with us. Thank you for taking your time out. I hope you enjoyed Global Influencers. We love producing this episode. It was so fascinating. We went all over the globe to talk to some really, really fascinating people doing some cutting edge therapy. This is the future of medicine. This is exploding internationally, as you can see from some of the people that we interviewed. I highly suggest you watch the series again and again because there's so much information to get and share it with your loved ones because really this is how we're going to be practicing medicine in the future.